Happy Friday, everybody. This is the Ask a Painter live show. I'm Nick Slavic, your host. I'm also the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. You guys know what this show is for. Any question, any topic, anything you want to talk about, we do it here. If I don't have the answers, this is the best, biggest, brightest connection for craftspeople, business owners all over the world. So this is what it's here for. We are going to get to the Purdy Backpack. But after just a few things, we got to do some house cleaning. We got the PCA contractor question of the week, and I got some other notes for you. So number one, the Slavic House, the hashtag Slavic House. You can follow along progress. Did an electrical walkthrough today. We laid out all the outlets, the TVs, the switches, things like that. That is going to be coming to a completion in the next couple of months here, which means we are going to be selling the original Slavic House. This house, my beautiful 1917 fully restored craftsman home, story and a half, uh, by this house. The listing's going up on January 31st. Uh, all the pictures will be up, the price will be announced then, and you can buy my house. So look forward to that. Uh, number two, I've uh, put out my first bunch of dates for 2020. I'm gonna be traveling around the country, a uh, series of industry events, Sherwin-Williams Pro Shows, uh, various trade association events, things like that. I'm gonna be taking master's classes, live Ask a Painter shows with me wherever I go. So the dates uh, and where I'm gonna be are in the notes above. Uh, so let's get to the PCA contractor question of the week. So thank you, uh, Chris Shank. We're not going to go do a live today, but he did send along the question. He, he passes along his regards. The contractor question of the week this week is how do you keep your people healthy, especially through the winter months? Number one, uh, I tried to think of some experience, some data or something I can share. Number one, you can't because it's not up to you. Uh, I will tell you this, from having four young kids that go out to three or four different schools in the area and they come home, they're bringing all sorts of stuff from everywhere else. And I think it's absolutely inevitable that you're going to get sick or ill or be under the weather. So number one, if you're the leader of this ship, you can't really have a sick day. So you sort of need to just tough it out. Eat right. Make sure you're moving around a little bit. Make sure you're not uh, staying up too late, getting enough sleep. Obviously, these are just basic things, but the people who do them really well consistently magically get really good results. Uh, the second thing you can do is keep a very flexible work schedule in the winter. In the summer, we barely have any sick days. In the winter, 10 to 20 percent of your entire workforce will be out because of something. Somebody will fall when they're shoveling. Somebody will twist an ankle on some ice. Pneumonia, flu, coughs, cold, fever throwing up and if that's not enough their kids might be sick and they may not be able to go to daycare and then the craftsperson or apprentice that you employ has to stay home with them so the best advice i can give you from experience the things that i found the best results for is be flexible with your people and understand you would want to be treated the same way if you had a sick kid at home if you had a sick spouse at home and you needed to stay home it's not a great situ situation for everybody they're missing a day of work they're missing a day of pay maybe multiple days of pay and you have to be there for them and you would want to be treated the same way. So that's about the best advice I can give you. And I will say this, um, a, a paint company owner uh, many, many years ago uh, passed along the piece of information to me that 10 to 20% of your workforce will be out for some reason at any one point every day of the year. So you got vacations, you got family stuff, you got sick kids, you got appointments, you got all any manner of things that can happen. Uh, 10 to 20% of your workforce is going to be out at any one time. Don't fight against it. Take reality on reality's terms and just be flexible as a boss. One of the biggest benefits that we offer in this company is the ultimate flexible schedule, which is if you need to get to childcare in the morning, if you got to leave early for childcare, if you're honest with us and you meet our core values, we'll trust that you're going to work as much as you can. Just go do it. Take care of your family. Take care of your friends. Do those things. So we have an ultimately flexible schedule. People take off whenever they want. And because everybody passes our core value test at the, at the beginning of all this, we don't really have any problems with that stuff. So hopefully that helps you guys. Okay, so here it is, Purdy Backpack. I'm going to show you guys not only what I carry around in my Purdy Backpack, I'm going to show you some of the super cool features that you may have not have uh, saw from any of the videos and stuff out there yet. So two quick things for you. Everybody's asking, how much is it? When can I get it? Where can I get it? Price not released yet. March only in Sherwin-Williams stores. Two things for you as well. Uh, there's two links in the show notes above, above where I listed all my dates and locations where I'm gonna be live. The first link is for, if you wanna see some features, some videos, if you want more information about this. Second link is, uh, you can actually sign up for notifications the second this thing goes live, the second you can get one, and the second they release a price, you're gonna be notified instantly. So those two links up there, check those out. 
In the meantime, I'm going to show you what I carry in mind. So at first glance, you're going to notice that this thing is substantial. So we all know what we get from Purdy. Pure craftsmanship, quality, durability, well thought out things, just substantial, usable, efficient tools. And this is no different here. It, it has enough room and enough organization things for just about everything you want. Lots of pads on the backside, lots of straps to evenly distribute sort of the weight here. Uh, and just remember, this is the only one. This is it. Uh, there are no other painter's backpacks out here, and this is one of the first one released in the country, and I'm so happy to share it with you guys. I feel very humbled and privileged to do that. Um, number one, um, I will talk about the wet brush and roller pouch, which is super innovative. Uh, this is a thing that has a waterproof lining inside here. You can put your brushes, rollers, wet from the job site in here. You know, imagine a place you're working downtown, you're working in a rural site, they haven't hooked up water yet. Put all your stuff in here, take it off site, and clean it there. If you don't want to clean them in the client's house, this is perfect. I don't let any of my craftspeople clean things on the site. I make them all take it back uh, and either get rid of the stuff or wash it away from there. Interesting story about this Purdy backpack before I show you the innards of this. Uh, years and years ago, uh, maybe two, three, four years ago, I was at the PCA Con uh, Expo. Uh, I can't remember which one. It might have been uh, New Orleans. And uh, Purdy has these focus groups where they take people aside. They make you sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement, where you can't talk about or show whatever you've seen or heard or, or witnessed here. And they lock you in a room and they start sharing some ideas. Here's some prototypes. Here's some things we've been working on. What do you think? Would you use it? What would you improve? Two or three years ago, they talked about this. This is super cool. I was in a room with some of the best, most thoughtful craftspeople in the entire country, and we don't take credit for this. This is all Purdy's doing, but we did have some input in the process, and Purdy fully listened to what we had to say, and I cannot tell you how satisfying it is to be sitting in that room years ago and then now to see this thing come out. It is a fully realized thing. Uh, all our wishes, all our things that we put out there, the feedback there, they listened, and here it is. So. Number one, uh, there's uh, attachable uh, loops here. So backside of this pouch, you can actually attach this on here on the outside. So when you do get back to your place, you just attach this thing. You don't need to drag this down into your washroom or anything. Uh, very convenient sleeve right here. So you just tuck in anything you need to for a quick, uh, quick grab. Uh, cinch cords here. The first big pocket here folds out a little bit. And this is mainly what I use for my business stuff. So. We have one of my famous laminated SOPs. I laminate them so that we can use them on the job site here. Very handy, very convenient. Uh, grab this right away on the job site. And I'm gonna go through your guys' questions and comments here in a little bit. I'm gonna finish the tour of the Purdy stuff. So we got a notebook here. So if you have deep thoughts, you write them down. I got digital pen, pens, chapstick markers. I got a jetpack, portable internet in here too. We got charging cords, earphones, wallet. Uh, we got the mouse. Mouse for my tablet in here too. So this is sort of the business pouch for me, uh, carrying all that stuff in here. It's got a, got a ring for your keys and stuff on here. Uh, this pouch up here, the top dead center, uh, I have quick grab tools. So we got a quick tape measure up here, maybe a utility knife. I usually keep my little purdy folding tool uh, in this guy as well. So that's a quick, quick grab pouch here. The first big pouch, like, this is super impressive guys. This is like, uh, uh, opening up that briefcase in, in Pulp Fiction, the movie. So we got uh, some prep tools and some brushes. So the collection of the joint knives, uh, the painter's tool, the multi-tools, the wire brushes here, all laid out, purpose-built, fits everything perfectly, keeps it clean and organized. So, you know, again, what, what we're getting away from is the five-gallon bucket with a whole bunch of junk down into the bottom. Like, just looking at this, substantial. So obviously, collection of brushes here. Um, I love it how Purdy has everything color coded. So when you're looking to do an enamel job, bam, nylocks. You just grab that thing and go. Also, I keep all the brush protectors or the bristle protectors on them because uh, you know you just want to keep all your bristles clean. Um, and one of the one of the best things about the the backpack is that all the organization you need, business, craft, um, the trade, everything you need is right here. So when you show up on site, think about it like Swiss Army knife sort of thing. I wanna show up on site, sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna get into, I just have to react and I have to be able to do a lot of things at once. So you carry all this stuff. So think about, uh, I have one of my craftspeople, a couple of them uh, at odd times, but one of my main craftspeople going to downtown Minneapolis and working on a historic theater restoration. Sometimes he has to par park six, eight blocks away, there's monstrous commercial and industrial projects going on there. 
this is perfect. You throw the backpack on, you got your notes, you got your SOPs, you got your brushes, you got your rollers, you got your prep tools and everything, and you can walk there because it's not accessible. A lot of these times in these urban settings, uh, deep urban settings, you're not going to be able to pull your big van right out in front, open the doors and unload. You're going to need to park a long, a long ways away and eventually get in there like that. So uh, very interesting stuff. So we got the brushes right here. The next big flat, and I love the, the way this stuff just folds out here. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. This thing stands. I got it tilted a little bit here so you guys can see everything, but it's got the nice rubber feet on the bottom. It'll stand up. It's substantial, and you can kind of reference it. It's almost like a big moving toolkit that you can wear around. So we've got the tape here, uh, caulk, roller covers, all sorts of different roller covers. Again, you want to be a Swiss Army knife. You want to show up and do whatever you can. I keep my tablet in this one here. Uh, a little deeper in there. Just protects it if you need to. We got a drill back down in there, down in the bottom. Keep the uh, center of uh, gravity, keep the, keep the weight low, easy to carry. Rolled up spray suit, always carry one of these around. You're never uh, gonna know when you need it. More roller covers here. And uh, one of the super interesting things uh, that you guys are gonna find about this backpack is there's actually a USB port right here on the side. And what I do, I carry around my little uh, portable battery pack right here. You just put the USB cord in, slide that guy in there. You can actually charge up your device from outside. There's a USB port right here that you plug into and you're ready to go. So side pouches here. On this little one, uh, cell phone, other things you wanna charge, you can put that charging cord right down into it like this. I just have a little uh, mini tripod right here. On the other side, you got a spot for your extendable roller handles here. Uh, my roller handles and my roller cages are all on site right now, but otherwise you stuff all that stuff in here. You can fit up to 18 inch roller covers, 18 inch roller frames, nine inch roller frames, things like that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Oh yes, small little personal pouch up here. So if you just gotta do some quick grab things, bus passes, uh, light rail stuff, wallet, things like that, it's a nice soft pouch. Throw a phone in there too if you like. And basically you are ready to go. So this is the Purdy Backpack. Uh, I'm gonna go through your questions, your comments. We can talk about whatever you want. Um, after this show, we're gonna get back to our format of mastering the basics in 2020. We're gonna be talking about more job costing and industry benchmarks. We're gonna be drilling that stuff because I honestly believe that that's the single biggest thing we can do uh, as an industry and even the trades to raise the level, bring some more people in, improve everybody's lives, more happy clients. So let's go through some questions and some comments here. Oh man, thank you everybody for watching. Omero, Phil Klein, my good friend from Iowa, Mike Wojohn, another Minnesota painter, Alex St. Germain, one of my craftspeople, Parker, one of my craftspeople, Amblios, thank you for watching, Antonio, Jade, another Minnesota painter, Adam Northensgold, another Minnesota painter, love these guys. Uh, Steely, yes, it's a very nice thing. Uh, Alexander, give my guys, it won't survive one month. <laughs> How many painters out there <coughs> keep their tools in place? Well, listen, one of the interesting things, if you look at the highest paid, finest craftspeople in my company, magically, they all keep their tools like this, nice and clean, nice and organized, ready to go whenever they need to. So <coughs> everybody not uh, may not do it. But if you teach them well, if you drill them, and you hold them accountable to it magically, uh, they will start keeping their tools good. And if, you, if they stay around long enough and they share your same core values magically, they'll start carrying tools around like this too. So Patrick, how's it going, man? Uh, Amplios, yes. Uh, Lacey, <laughs> I need to get that for Chad Bolino. He would be very happy with that thing. Connor O'Keefe, fellow Minnesota craftsperson. Thanks for watching, man. Uh, Vicky, thanks for watching. Chris Hope. Uh, Dominic, Dominic Crowley, all oh, from across the pond. Thanks for watching, man. Again, I know I say it all the time. If you guys do not follow Dominic Crowley painting, get on Instagram, get on Facebook, follow this dude. He does some insanely beautiful craft over there across the pond. So, uh, d -d 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 Parker Johnson, how many would be ideal for a job site? One per crew, one per person, one per person. Uh, this is definitely a single, uh, you can carry enough stuff to probably support multiple painters, uh, but you, but I think they would be most useful if each, if each person had one. So, uh, Mike McKinney, definitely want, uh, Adam North and Scold, any word on MSRP yet? No, uh, I don't have any secrets. They just haven't released it yet. So there is a link up above. You can sign up for an update. If you want to be notified instantly when it's available, March, where it's available, Sherwin Williams, and how much it is, I don't know. 
you can get that link and get notified instantly. So, ah, Adam, hey, uh, just I saw on uh, uh, Facebook earlier today too that Adam, you must have been prepping a stairwell. It had no skirt board, just uh, just carpet. And uh, I fully agree. Adam thought that there should be some kind of building code against not having skirt boards where you got to tape through the carpet, zigzagged all the way up. And I fully agree, man. That's a that's a great thing. So, Marcelo. Need this now. Everything I wanted in a backpack and more. Absolutely, man. Like, this thing is substantial. And Ryan Turry. Oh, Ryan, thanks for watching, man. I appreciate it. Another fellow Minnesota painter here. So uh, if you guys want to see anything else, uh, this is my thing. This is what I carry around. If you got any other specific questions, I'm always happy to help you guys. But this is substantial. And again, I, I cannot tell you how satisfying it is to have heard about this, uh, offered some input years and years ago. Not that my input would have mattered. But to be a part of the process years ago and then to actually see it is a super, super rewarding thing. So remember, with Purdy, you know what you're going to get. It's going to be good. It's going to last a long time. It's going to do exactly what you want because it's by pros for pros. And this is a substantial piece of equipment. And there's only one. If you want a painter's backpack that actually does something for you, this is it. There's only one. Uh, yeah, so let's see. The two links are up there. My dates are up there. I'm just making sure I didn't forget anything. Um, yeah, oh, so again, if you think about the use of the backpack here too, um, I'm thinking about one of my friends who works in Manhattan in New York City, maybe takes Ubers, maybe takes public transport uh, to the job sites. Imagine how cool this is. If you got your business stuff, you got this all in a nice, neat package where you can do whatever you want. So again, everybody, links above if you want to be notified, link above if you want more information about this tool. My dates are listed in the show notes here. If you want to come see a master's class, if you want to be part of an Ask a Painter live show, if you just want to press the flesh, have a beer, learn together, let's all get together and raise the standards of the industry. Each one of us has to be a good example for young people to be inspired by to get into the trades. So get out there, run a good business, make happy clients, do good work, inspire more people to get out here. And this whole industry, this whole trades industry, is going to change over the next 10 years. So thank you everybody for watching. We'll be back to mastering the basics next week and have a good weekend.